let me start my talk titled Ruby 2 Methodology. This talk focuses on method in Ruby. I'm sorry, but this talk is going to be a serious, pure Ruby talk. You know that RubyConf this year has these session tracks, like domain patterns, less code, with weird Ruby in depth, et cetera, et cetera. And I think it's very well balanced, diverse topics. It's so like matured conference. But still, I'm so glad that RubyConf still has the uh, Ruby in depth track. By the way, I guess you've heard of another conference called Ruby Kaigi in Japan, which is happening next month. Yes? Thank you. Thank you. Who's, who's coming to Ruby, Ruby Kaigi? Raise your hands. Mm, not so many, but yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. So the conference website looks like this. It has, uh, the conference is a three days conference and it has two tracks per each day. So it kind of has six tracks. And all of these six tracks will be <laughs> just about Ruby. Ruby, 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 and Ruby. So at Ruby Kagi. Everyone, every, everyone talks about Ruby because it's a Ruby conference, right? <laughs> if you want to see more Ruby talks, I'm sure Ruby Kaigi is the conference you should go. <laughs> okay, and I guess you all want to talk, uh, I mean, hear about Ruby, so that's why you are here, right? Yes, yeah, so come to Ruby Kaigi, maybe next year. And the conference is organized by these people, and I'm at the very top <laughs> as the uh, chief organizer of Ruby Kaigi this year. So that's me. My name is Akira Matsuda. I'm on GitHub as A Matsuda. I work for Ruby, Ruby on Rails, and several other open source products and consulting several companies. So, all right. I said this talk focuses on method in Ruby. I'm gonna talk about some modern usage of Ruby's method. And I'm not just introducing the, uh, these features like uh, reference. I'd like to tell my own stories. I like to tell how I'm concerned, or what I did, or what I'm doing with these, with lots of code examples. So let's start with the method definition. To define a method, of course, we use def. For example, like this, def hello. And, but sometimes we want to define a method with weird names, like, not like hello, for example, like emoji. <laughs> Let's say, can, I, can a method, ne method name contain emojis? Who thinks that you can do this? Ah, okay, okay, thanks. The answer is yes. You can do like deaf beers. It, it, it's perfectly valid Ruby code. And you can see an actual code like this in, in SFRX Active Emoji Gem, which looks like this. At the bottom, it has like def 10, def 100, etc., and it works. And you can just call these methods with their name, like Port Spears, right? Then. Which character cannot be a method name? You can imagine like some of these ASCII characters like one, two, three, or question mark, at sign, colon, semicolon. They might be invalid method name. For example, defining an at sign method. This causes a syntax error. So how can we define it? Uh, at sign method, 
without using C extensions. I actually do this a lot in my application. This is a, a real code example for my application, defining at sign, exclamation, colon. So to know which character is invalid method name, just it's simply um, just try to define the method and catch the error, and the result becomes like this. Like uh, space, back quote, dollar, one, two, three, four, at sign, square bracket. The, all of these can still be defined by a define method. All right? So how can we call this method? Of course, we have kernel send. And that at sign method can be called by send. And kernel send is actually not only used for calling these abnormal name method, but also for like um, determining the method name dynamic dynamically or um, when calling a method from outside of scope. This is an example of um, dynamically changing a method, method to call. It's taken from Rails Action Controller. And another example of calling a method from outside of scope is like this. It's a, defining a private method and calling it via send. So what is method scopes? There are three types of method scopes public, protected, and private. Public is, of course, the default scope open to everyone. And private is like this. You cannot call private via a um, normal method call. It's very simple, okay? And what's this? Uh, <laughs> ah, yeah, you can, call the private method by, from the, inside the class, right? But if there is a local variable with the same name, the private method will never be called, but just the local variable will be called. So how, how, how to call the method? Um, you can put parentheses, to, to say that, to like, uh, to call the method, not the local variable. Well, Schwit works, but it looks like a JavaScript. <laughs> so, no thank you. <laughs> Another way to call the private method is to prepend self dot for this work. Unfortunately, no. It raises no method error. We hit this situation on a real, real application at UB Reggie. Um, so we changed a public method in Rails controller to be private. Then we saw this no method error because we put self dot and it worked and it used to work well, while the method was public. And I think this should not be an error. So we wrote a patch. Like this, a little private method with self dot. So it was written by this guy, Sotero, and Matt accepted, accepted this. It's okay. Submerged. That's what he said. But I'm sorry, I forgot to merge this in. And he said, um, please do the documentation, but I had no time to do this. So 
this, the patch is done, but it's not still not included in 2.3. Maybe it's coming in 2.4. <laughs> well, another another way to call a method with self dot is change the scope to protected. Right? Protected. So, what exactly is protected? Who can explain? Who here can explain? <laughs> Protected is like familiar in Java, Java and C++, but Ruby's protected is different from these. And well, it can't be called from outside, like private. private. Right. But it can called from other instance of the same class. That's the difference between private and protected. So who uses this feature? <laughs> I searched for a real world use case in Rails. As you know, Rails includes so many protected. I saw more than 200 use case, 200 occurrences if protected in, in Rails. And I found almost all of these are wrongly used. I mean, actually means private. So I wrote a patch <laughs> to um, replace 150 protected to private, and it still works. The, all the test passes. So it mean, that means more than 90% of protected in Rails code actually means private. And the rest, like 20 or 30 use cases, this is the real use case of protected. Um, Action controller parameters, dupes, and it calls um, the permitted method of another instance of duplicated parameters instance, right? This cannot be done if the method is private. So my advice is don't use protected unless you're sure you're calling protected method, okay? However, again, this patch is still not merged <laughs> because the patch has a problem, the RDoC, RDoC problem. RDoC mutes private methods documentation. For example, if you have these um, methods and documentations, public, predictive, private. The RDoC generates documentations for pr pr oh, sorry, um, public and protected, right? And does not generate documentation for private methods. So my Rails patch, um, my Rails patch spoils so much documentations in Rails. That's not good. So this was the story of how we abuse protected and still we, how and why still we need protected in Rails. And by the way, we found another art of problem, problem in Rails. Consider we have this class, like, you know, public def, protected def, private def. This is introduced from, I guess, 2.1. So, um, generating our doc from this class generates empty documentation. And even worse, if once private has, uh, de was defined, the rest of the uh, methods become empty. This was already um, filed on GitHub, our doc, our doc. So we need a patch. 
unless this issue is solved, we cannot use this syntax, private def. So um, we're looking for a patch, <laughs> please. And so the another, uh, next topic is method objects. Another way to invoke a method other than um, calling the method or sending to method is method call. Call method of the method of objects. Um, you can ins inspect an object's method like this. And you can extract a extract a method object from a class or instance, and you can call it this way. You can also pass in a parameter, parameter, and uh, this is how we, you can get a method object from the class, of, not from the instance. It's actually called unbound method. It's kind of method, but you cannot call the unbound method. In order to call the unbound method, it's kind of different. So in order to call the unbound method, you have to bind to a, an instance of that class. For example, there's a person class and cat class, and each of these defines hello method. And are these hello method an instance of that? The answer is no. It causes type error. So you cannot unbind a method from person and bind it to a cat. It causes an error. But here's a new, new feature of Rails, uh, sorry, Ruby 2 called method transplanting. Well, you can unbind a method from a module, then bind it to a class. That's called method transplantation. It's nothing diff different from including the math module directly into the case, in, into the cap in this case, but it's kind of cherry picking a method without including the whole module, right? And more new features in Ruby 2.2 is you can, you can cherry pick a method from a class and bind to another class. Only if the module, oh, sorry, method is from a module, originally comes from a module. This is so much useful for writing Rails monkey patches because, because Rails has, many, has so many mo modules with so, so many methods. So you can just cherry pick any method from modules and then put into your own class, right? Another topic is parameter. As I said, you can pass in a parameter to method call. So what's the parameter? It, it's like passing something from outside and it can, you can use the variable inside the method just like a local variable, right? So how can, it, how can we know what kind of method does a method, oh, sorry, parameters does a method take? Ruby 1.9 has method, parameters method, implemented by this guy, Koichi. He's, of course, you know, you know who very well. He's the author of Ruby 1.9 VM called Garp who's employed as full-time Ruby committer by Heroku. So this is what's 
happening when you call methods parameter. It returns from sort of array of array. Something like this with an optional parameter. And like, like this, where args in block. So how can we use this? I'm gonna show you a real world example of using this method parameters. Let's say Rails plugin written by me and um, it's kind of something to make your Rails controller act like Merb's controller, like this. With this plugin, you can make your Rails controller to take a parameter. So you don't have to access the params thing, right? And it supports um, filters before actions as well. So, and, and it supports keyword arguments as well. So what's keyword arguments? It's a new feature since Ruby 2.0, um, implemented by this guy, Mame. He's, I guess, kind of known as the author of this thing, uh, Quine relaying for 100 programming languages. So, um, this is the output of method parameter for key, keyword arguments. It's lab labeled like key and key rest. So, I recommend you all to use um, action args. It's very good. Actually, I cannot live without this when working on Rails application. So please try. And by the way, I tried to bring keyword arguments into Rails itself like two, three years ago. Um, I tried replacing some methods into keyword arguments like this. Like, mm, can you see this? I'm sorry, it's, it's a little bit hard to see. Anyway, um, it's very, very much like clean, clear API. However, I found a specification bug on keyword parameters in Ruby 2.0. You know, Rails takes, sometimes takes like if or unless keyword, and it cannot be a keyword argument for Ruby 2.0. Because as I told you, an argument, a parameter is basically a local variable, and local variable in Ruby cannot be accessed. It causes syntax error. So, you cannot define a argument, I mean method parameter, with a keyword, label as a keyword, right? But strangely, you can do this via keyword argument. Yes, reserved word, reserved word can be a keyword. And you can actually call this. You can pass in a if parameter into this method. But I said, you cannot access to this variable. So how can you use this? Which means you can, you can create a local variable, but, but you cannot touch it. <laughs> it's totally useless, right? <laughs> this is what happened in Ruby 2.0. So I reported this problem and Koichi and Nobu fixed it, this. Nobu, of course, the patch monster. So how, can, how he fixed it, this? We 
introduced a new feature called binding.local variables and binding.local variables get. And now you can access the if variable this way. All right. Another problem of keyword argument was performance. It used to be very slow because it internally creates hash instance for each method call. But Koichi fixed this in 2.2. He refactored the implementation and made it fast. So I guess in Rails 5, which probably will come in soon, it supports Ruby only 2.2 and 2.3. And it's a major version bomb, so it's a good chance to like, break the API. <laughs> and now we have a, a way to access the if and unless variables. And I think it's fast enough. So I guess it's ready to introduce keyword arguments into Rails. I mean, it's ready to, it's time to finish my patch, but I'm sorry I had no time to work on this, I guess, until Rails 5. So someone please take this. <laughs> now the next topic is module prepend. Yes, Rails 5. Talking about Rails 5, um, alias method chain is deprecated. Yay. Yay. <laughs> For those of who don't know what alias method chain is, it's a monkey patching idiom since Rails 1. Actually, Rails 0 point something. The very first implementation looks like this. It's just a alias method and alias method. And this is how you use this. So you can override the safe method and add some new feature like validation. This is the example. After calling the after monkey patching, then calling the save method, it outputs validated and saved. And you still can call the unmonkey patch version, the method that returns save only. It's named save without validation. It's very handy, right? And it's very intuitive method name, save without validation, return saved, right? but it actually has the dark side. The dark side is safe without validation doesn't always act as it really means. What if we have another chain, like callback? Now the save method does save, um, sorry, callback and validation and save. And let's, Let's call the save without validation method. It's not only skipping the validation, but it also skips the callback, right? So it's, it's such harmful. Save without validation doesn't only skip validation in, in some cases, and you cannot tell which case, right? So the without method is just harmful. Don't call this and don't, don't even define this. So we think we needed a, a nicer language support for monkey patching instead of alias method chain. And that was introduced in Ruby 2.0 called module prepend. How it works is basically like a reverse ordered module include. Module include is like this. You can include the validation functionality into the original save. And this is module prepend. You can do the same way, but you can call 
um, I mean, you need to call super from the included module, I mean, prepended module. <laughs> this is how it makes it called code queen. Like, this is the real world example of using module prepend. All of these used to be alias method change, so there used to be a tons of method definition, but using prepend, um, it just looks like, you know, the only method defined here is render, and yeah, it's very simple, very clean, right? So module prepend always comes with send. I mean, uh, like this, send prepend. And because it was initially designed in the same way as module inclu include, but I felt it's in unnatural because it's for monkey patching, and monkey patching is always done from outside. So why can't we call module prepend from outside? So I proposed to make module prepend and include public for Ruby 2.1, and it was accepted by Mats. So you no more have to like send prepend or send include in Ruby, in recent version of Ruby. This is done by myself. And next topic is super, super method. Um, this is numbers of super in Rails. It's so much heavily used because how, because how it's, Rails is designed. But since there are so many like def save super, def save super, def render super, def render super, it's so hard to read through and it's so hard to debug. Like, you know, seeing the spec stack trace, there are so many save, 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 save. Like this, active record has, has so many super. So, for example, when reading code and finding super, how can I imagine, like, that super calls which super? So there's a new feature in Ruby 2.2 called super method. It returns a methods, method object which will be actually called by a super. It's initially designed for debugging purpose, but I found that it's useful, not only for debugging, but for production code. So let's, back, let's get back to alien, alias method chain. I said there's no way calling save without validation because there's no save without validation method defined in module prepend. But actually, it's not true. You still can call the super method because it's a method object and you can bind, uh, you can call the method object. So this is how you how you can um, call the meth safe without validation in module prepend. So what if we have two modules prepended like this, validation callback? You can call super method, super method, and still you can call save only, right? So what if you have n modules prepended? Now, method has owner, which returns the owner called super method. So it returns something like this, the, the module name, I mean module. So you can like iterate the super method until the owner returns the, the uh, target class, right? 
And to generalize this a little bit, you can monkey patch method object like this, call without validation. You can call without validation using this method, okay? So you can still something like a list method chain if you want to do it. But sadly, I guess nobody uses super method because it's still so buggy and no, nobody reports the bug. For example, uh, unbound method has super method, but it returns nil for some reason. <laughs> it's just a bug. And um, by, by the way, I already reported this. And um, module prepend plus super method, super method <laughs> returns, it should return nil, but it like loops loops between the class and module. So it's another bug. This should be fixed, I guess, hopefully before 2.3. Um, okay, I guess I have five more minutes to talk about refinements. <laughs> so, module prepend is a great tool to monkey patch. It's less polluting than elements of chain and it only, but it only can override a existing method in the target module. But that's not always the case. What if we want to um, monkey patch some class and include some module and define a method, met, some kind of private method there, and we don't want to expose that internal method to the users? For example, like this. Um, extending some framework and doing some business logic, defining some like logic inside, and we don't want to expose the bar method to users. How can you do this? For this purpose, we can use refinements. Refinements is introduced from Ruby 2.0 by Shugo Sang, who's Matt's boss, and it used to be something more powerful, but, but the recent version of refinements is kind of file scoped monkey patching tool. So this is how you use refinements. For example, um, defining a monkey patching method to a string, you can call this method only when using I mean, um, declared to use that module. So I'm gonna show you the real world use case of refinements. It like extends Rails action controller base and I define several methods there. But you know, these are not not needed for Rails, essentially. So I, I define these methods only for internal use in, inside this, this uh, Rails plugin. So I use these methods in another, another file in the Rails plugin using using. And it's, these are never exposed to the end users, right? So this way you can create very, very clean monkey patch. I would call this super private method. These methods will never expose to the end users, right? So, um, and exploring this feature, I found some pitfalls of refinements. Like, you cannot call the refined method by a send or a public send. But it's, you know, we, we very often want to monkey patch some method which is very often called by a send, particularly in Rails. <laughs> so I really want to call the refined method in Rails 
Um, but I still want to use refinements for my Rails monkey patching pl plugins. I think this, re this re restriction is too like, hard and should be loosened, in, in my opinion. So I requested to um, please loosen this restriction. I actually asked Matt personally yesterday, and he said maybe, maybe in 2.4, maybe. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> All right. To summarize, um, you know, reuse method is still getting better and better. So I want you all to play with these new features of method, and we can all make this better, make method better to be more useful. So let's let's hack on method and make Ruby more fun. Thank you very much.